Coasters come and coasters go. Sometimes you hear Parks mention a ride has reached the end of its lifespan. This can be after 20 or 25 years. But what about the coasters that have been operating for three, four, five, even six times that long? Those are still out there, and if you know where to look, you yourself can ride a coaster that's into the triple digits. Today, let's go around the world and find every operating coaster that's at least 100 years old. First, a few honorable mentions. These coasters are three or less years away from the mark, so their time will come. First, Wildcat at Lake Compounds, opened in 1927. This PTC coaster is 97 years old, in a park that's now 178 years old. This has a bad reputation, known for being a rough ride, but the park is doing everything they can to keep it alive. In 2017, it got new Millennium Flyer trains and a full retrack. In 2024, it's going to reopen with new pre-cut track from the Gravity Group. Also from 1927, there is Racer at Kennywood. This is the newest of their three wooden coasters. A John A. Miller wooden coaster that cost the cool 75 grand back in the mid-20s. This having two tracks that run in a Mobius loop, so you leave one station and return to the other. Then there's the Icon, the Coney Island Cyclone, now operating at Luna Park. Not only is this still going strong, it's the best ride at Coney Island. It was in danger back in the early 70s, standing idle for five years. But there was a movement to save it, and it worked. One year older is Holomvasit, a wooden coaster at Hungary's Holmenvault Park. This is a very impressive structure, one of those scenic railways that still uses a brakeman. And if you want to get technical, this was built 102 years ago, but didn't open until 98 years ago. This hasn't operated since 2015. It's park being incorporated into the zoo next door. But because of the importance of this coaster, they don't want to tear it down. Last one, Giant Dipper at Belmont Park. This barely missed a list, opening in 1925. And it hasn't always been smooth sailing for the San Diego Woody. It seized operations from 1976 to 1990, almost being torn down, but it was saved at the last second. If you spend a day at SeaWorld, be sure to stop by Belmont Park and ride this classic. Before we get started, if you can drop this video a like, I'd appreciate it. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you love coasters, I'd appreciate it if you gave me a sub. A couple channel plugs. Airtime thrills raw footage. That's my channel for copyright-free off-ride footage, set up for other coaster YouTubers to use. Also, Home Run Productions. That's where I talk about all things baseball, so check that out if you're a fan. Number 12, Giant Dipper at Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, opened on May 17, 1924. The year before Giant Dipper at Belmont, it was another California beachfront woody that got all the attention. This Giant Dipper is half a mile long, rising up 70 feet, dropping 65 feet, Hitting 55 miles an hour, designed by Pryor and Church, and built at the cost of $50,000. This was named a National Historic Landmark by the U.S. National Park Service in 1987. And even as it celebrates its 100th birthday, it's still a smooth and forceful ride. You're going to have to fork over a few bucks though. That's a big change from the 15 cents it would cost you to ride back in 1924. The size of this project was so large for its time, the builder had to reassure a nervous public, saying it was virtually impossible for the trains to leave the track. Number 11, Thunderbolt at Kennywood, opened on May 4, 1924. This was built for Kennywood's silver anniversary, turning 25 years old. When this coaster was new, it was called Pippin, and it was about half of what it is now. In 1968, the layout was extended, adding that helix after the lift hill, but keeping all those dives down to the ravine. Because of this renovation, some people say this shouldn't count, but a lot of that layout is still intact from 1924. It's now just a longer and more complete ride experience. This has Kennywood's most dynamic wooden layout, and it's my favorite of the three in the park. 3,250 feet of track, 70 feet tall. But because of that terrain, its max drop is 90 feet, reaching a top speed of 55 miles an hour. It was so good for its time. Famous coaster enthusiast Robert Cartmel wrote an article for the New York Times in 1974, and he said Thunderbolt was the best in the world. Number 10, Thunderhawk at Dorney Park, opened March 30th, 1924. This PTC wooden coaster was not the park's first coaster. They had one called Grand Scenic Railway between 1905 and 1912, and a dozen years later, they opened Coaster. It was also an out-and-back coaster when it opened, and six years after opening, it was reprofiled and received a twister section in the middle of the ride. Now, it had 2,767 feet of track, starting with an 80-foot lift, 65-foot drop, and 45-mile-an-hour top speed. This had a tunnel on the turn out of the station, but when Cedar Fair bought the park in 1993, that was removed. 
Also, a set of trims were added to the finale, slowing the train down and cutting out the airtime. This was known as Coaster from the time it opened in 1924 all the way until 1989, when it got its new name, Thunderhawk. Number 9. Big Dipper at Blackpool Pleasure Beach Opened August 23, 1923. When this opened 101 years ago, it wasn't quite the coaster it is now. It used to stop here, where the Big Ones Lift Hill is, and it shot off to the east. In 1936, this was extended south, making a big turnaround and heading back the same direction. The new product was now 3,300 feet long, standing 60 feet tall. The fifth coaster the park had opened in its 27-year history. The other four would disappear in the 20s and 30s, except for the Virginia Reel. That lasted all the way until 1982. You'd think this would at least be the oldest coaster in the UK, but you'd be wrong. Number 8. Roller Coaster at Lagoon Opened May 28, 1921. Lagoon dates back to 1886, and this was her second coaster, the scenic railway dating back to 1906 and being removed. When that was, nobody knows. That info's lost to history. This has had quite the history, operating until 1953 when it was severely damaged by fire. It was in flames up to the first dip, and the firemen didn't have much of a chance to save it, the flames shooting 300 feet in the air. Lagoon rebuilt it, so if you want to get technical, maybe this isn't really the same coaster that opened back in 1921. In spirit, it is, and it's still a great ride to this day. 62 feet tall, 45 miles an hour, 2,500 feet of track. For a long time, it was painted white and unofficially called the White Roller Coaster. But for now, it's back to its natural color, and in 2018, it was given Millennium Flyer trains. Number 7. Scenic Railway at Dreamland Opened on July 3, 1920. Here you go, your oldest coaster in the UK, featuring a pair of cable lift hills, 45 feet tall, hitting 35 miles an hour, covering 3,000 feet of track, and it still required a brake man on the train. We talked about that lagoon fire, but Scenic Railway puts it to shame. This had a fire damage the structure in 1949, 1957, and then again in 2008. That last one was actually an arson attack. The park had already been shut down and all the other rides had been removed. But ever since 2002, the Scenic Railway has had protection from the government as a landmark, so it couldn't be removed. So this park was closed down, it had a damaged coaster, but there was a movement to save the park and that started in 2009, using a mixture of public and private funds. The park and the coaster were restored and reopened on June 19, 2015. Number 6. Jackrabbit at Kennywood Opened on June 20, 1920. Kennywood's oldest remaining coaster, this was built by John A. Miller. He had just filed a patent for the upstop wheel, allowing for bigger drops and negative Gs, something the old side friction coasters couldn't handle. This allowed him to install the famous Double Down, the greatest airtime moment of his time, and still a pretty good one 104 years later. This was built into his terrain, just like the Pippin would be four years later, starting with a turn out of the station and a drop into a ravine, not hitting its lift hill until mid-ride, and that's when it goes into the double down. Because of that terrain, it rises up 40 feet but drops down 70 feet, hits 45 miles an hour, 2,132 feet of track. It's a timeless classic. Number 5. Jackrabbit at Seabreeze Opened May 31st, 1920. 104 years old, but it almost didn't make it out of year 4. In 1923, a fire wiped out the station, the lift hill, and the first drop. It was rebuilt and ready for the 1924 season. This was a big deal. The fastest coaster in the world hitting 42 miles an hour. Another John A. Miller Woody using those upstop wheels, standing 75 feet tall and covering 2,130 feet of track. This has also used different trains over the years, but since 1989, it's used these ones from D.H. Morgan. When this opened, you would be given a punch card when you got on the ride and the write-off would punch it for every lap around the course. Then, you would pay the cashier once you got off. If you didn't have the money, who knows what they would have done to you. Number 4. Wild One at Six Flags America Opened May 26, 1917 This is the only relocated coaster on the list, dating back to its time at Paragon Park, located in Nantucket Beach, Massachusetts. Here, it was known as Giant Coaster. We're now in the pre-upstop era, though this was still a John A. Miller Woody, built by PTC. 15 years into its life, this caught fire and needed to be restored. They saw this as a chance to redesign the ride, now using upstop wheels. In 1963, another fire wiped out the station, the trains, and the final helix. This time, the coaster would be shortened, the park unable to afford the rebuild as it is, so it lost two bunny hops in the entire final helix. When Paragon Park was shut down in 1984, the ride was auctioned off to a park in Maryland called Wild World, now known as Six Flags America. They hired the DIN Corporation to relocate this down the East Coast, and Curtis D. Summers helped out, replacing the Helix for its new home. 
At a park called Wild World, it was known as Wild One. Standing 98 feet tall, dropping down 88 feet, hitting 53 miles an hour, and covering 4,000 feet of track, this coaster has one heck of a story to tell. Number 3. Rushibanan at Tivoli Gardens, opened in 1914. This park in the heart of Copenhagen dates back to 1843. And wouldn't you believe it, this is not the first Rushibanan the park has seen. The first one was a wooden shuttle coaster that opened with the park. That lasted until 1887. Then, another Rushibanan followed. That lasted 15 years until 1902, and that was replaced by yet another one. This looks like it had some sick airtime, and it was removed in 1914. Here's Rushibon in Part 4, and this one stuck. This was built into a fake mountain, a side friction scenic railway model, using a brake band in the middle of the train, and he remains there to this day. He looks pretty good for being 110 years old. This is 39 feet tall, hits 37 miles an hour, covers 2,362 feet of track, and it remains glossy smooth, one of the most popular rides at the park. Number 2. Scenic Railway at Luna Park, opened on December 13, 1912. Located in Melbourne, Australia, this isn't where you would expect the world's second oldest coaster. This is similar to Rushibanan. It's a scenic railway, it's got the brake man, it stands 52.5 feet tall, hits 37.3 miles an hour, and covers almost 3,200 feet of track. It may be the second oldest coaster, but it's the oldest one that never closed down. It opened with this park right before World War I, and the park would actually be closed during the war, but the coaster was still operating. In 1923, the park would be renovated and reopened with a bunch of new rides, including the Big Dipper coaster that lasted all the way until 1989. When you've been open for 112 years, you're going to have your share of incidents, and in the 1980s, this had both the derailment and the trains collide. The park has worked hard to keep this running well, including major renovations in the late 90s and 2008. Number 1. Leap the Dips at Lakemont Park, open on June 2, 1902. This is a wooden side friction figure 8 coaster, the last one of its kind, rising up 41 feet but featuring small dips. The biggest one only 9 feet, only 10 miles an hour and 1,452 feet of track. This has had some gaps in its history. The most recent one was its closure between 2017 and 2020. This one mainly due to Lakemont Park undergoing a major change, selling most of its rides and redefining itself as a family entertainment center. The park reopened in 2019 without Leave the Dips, and that was ready to go for the summer of 2020. The park also closed for a year in 1936 while it was trying to raise some money, but the most significant closure for Leave the Dips occurred between 1986 and 1999. The structure was deemed to be unsafe. There wasn't any money to make the necessary repairs. But the people of the American Coaster Enthusiasts came to the rescue, launching a fundraising effort, and it worked. They were able to start restoring the ride in 1997, keeping more than 70% of the original wood in the ride, and it was officially reopened in 1999. If you can get to this park in Altoona, Pennsylvania, don't pass it up. This is living coaster history. That's all I got for this video. Let me know if you have any thoughts on these coasters. And if you had to guess, which one do you think would bite the dust next? And which one do you think is safe forever? I don't think any of these are on thin ice, but if I had to guess, I would say the one that's in the most danger is Leap the Dips. And I would say Rushibanan will still be running long after the human race is gone. At this point, these parks will move heaven and earth to keep these coasters going, but if the parks themselves survive, that may be the better question. Before you go, don't forget to drop a like, and if you're new here and love coaster content, please give me a sub. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.